So this structure allows one to go beyond the E8 in a very particular way. Wow. Okay. So the, the spotlight in the original construction, uh, when it comes to these Lie algebras, so you can always express these exceptional Lie algebras um, as some projection along SU3. So SU3 is the, well, it's known as quark symmetry, but there are multiple copies of SU3 this in here. Is a different this is, one. Yeah, this is a different one. It looks like at first. See? It's a little funny. <laughs> just because we talked about these transformations. So you can project them down to two dimensions along an SU3. Okay, and each time you do that, if you do it for F4, uh, E6, E7, and E8, you can project them to a star. And there are six star vertices inside. Okay, so you have these, uh, these outer points, okay, that, that are related to this SU3. But within it, you have six points that are actually equivalent to a three by three matrix Jordan algebra. Right. So, okay, which one? All right, well, for F4, these are three by three matrices over the real numbers, right? Yeah. And so E6, you have three by three over the complex. Uh, for E7, you have three by three over the quaternions. <laughs> and for E8, you have three by three over the actonians. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at it from that perspective, you can say, okay, well, if I have this structure in place, then it's kind of hinting at how to go beyond it, right? <laughs> so last year, last year uh, while in San Francisco, of course, when I discovered this, this uh, star pattern, uh, I was thinking, okay, there were different ways that I had, you know, that I had in mind for going beyond it. So as, as far as uh, this, this pattern goes, uh, I was envisioning, well, I, there was a little hint. So I had this, uh, you probably heard of uh, the advances in quantum gravity. That conference. Mini conference, right? Workshop yeah. conference that we put together. So it's kind of a hangout, of course. So Garrett stopped by, Eric Weinstein stopped by. <laughs> so we had Mia Hughes, you know, the usual suspects, right? So we're hanging out. <clears throat> Eric Weinstein comes in and he's like, what are you guys doing here? Right? Like, you guys are having way too much fun. And we're like, yeah, hey, what's, what's, what's up with your theory, right? Yeah. I wasn't even in the room at the time. I can hear them in the kitchen. Okay, so they're trying to coax him, you know, to come out with hints of, of his Tell hidden theory. Tell us what you're theory. doing. Right, yeah, yeah. This, this geometric unity, right? So how about you give us a little talk here, right? So we're taking a break. And he said, oh, no, you guys are like old drinking buddies, right? You just, you just guys are trying to get me back in the mix here. I'm not going to fall for that. So he ended up actually talking a little about uh, this higher symmetry in 24 dimensions. So he mentioned it. I thought it was pretty interesting. I, I overheard just a little bit. I didn't really catch the whole conversation. I was looking at some scheduling, you know, on my phone. So I can hear them. It was Alessio, Marani, and uh, Mia Hughes, okay? <laughs> so they kind of ambushed him, right, while he was in the kitchen. And they got him to go on the whiteboard at least for a little bit, right? So yeah. it wasn't an official talk, okay? So he mentioned... Uh, a certain uh, generalization of triality that occurs in 24 dimensions. So I thought it was pretty interesting and he wrote down the spinner for it and he made some comments along those lines. So uh, he didn't end up giving a talk. He just asked me, you know, how much, you know, it would, it would cost to, to do a larger version of the conference and I kind of ballparked something. I thought he was maybe interested in yeah. something along those lines and he took off and that was it. That's all we heard from him. So after that, we're, glaring at the board trying to figure out okay so this is quite interesting right maybe maybe this this is related to to the theory he has so everyone was kind of stuck on naming the algebraic structures that could relate to these right there's <laughs> yeah there it was late man we were tired what do you want to call it yeah what, what should we call this you know what kind of numbers would give this huge 2048 dimensional spinner right <laughs> like what kind of division algebra extension would that be so uh, John Huerta was there and uh, Mia, they were just hanging out. We were just having fun at that point. We weren't trying to think too much. So everyone went to bed and they're like, aren't you going to bed, Mike? I'm like, no, I'm going to study this structure because it's very interesting. And I want to find a structure that encompasses that plus E8, right? Some kind of structure. So I had in mind, um, I had an idea at that time because I was studying uh, these three and five gradings of the exceptional Lie algebras. And you can write them in a sequence. Okay, so you can build up from E6, E7, you have E8, uh, but it's a, a five grading, 
and then you have E8 as... They all fit inside each other, right? Yeah, it's kind of like this Russian doll way of writing it, okay? So this is something that I was studying uh, because uh, that paper on 12-dimensional uh, uh, and 14-dimensional uh, uh, Super Yang Mills theories came up. Right. So these go beyond 10 dimensions. Which is kind of funny. Yeah. Which is so, surprising. Because, yeah, I mean, usually we don't really want to go beyond 11, right? Yeah. Because M theory is in 11 dimensions, so why go beyond that, right? So what we can do is uh, we can go beyond by... By looking at these higher gradings, okay, it kind of gives us a hint of what we might have to do. So what increases, so if you look at Sezgin's paper, which I have no idea how I first encountered it, I, maybe I, by accident or something, I, maybe I looked at a reference somewhere, but it was quite a long time ago. But by the time Garrett put out another paper about Lee group cosmology, right. so it's not his first paper, the it, was, it was actually uh, a follow-up formalism that uses a different grading okay right. and the grading is just a different way to cut up e8 okay so he cut it up a different way in which uh 14 dimensions was manifest now so you have oh, okay. 11 spatial three times so the question is that's you know it, are you taking those seriously or is it what just are these time pure, is it purely just... formal right is it purely right. formal uh and above that you can also split it up into 12 spatial four temporal Huh. Okay, so you, but when you do that, you just have one huge 128 dimensional spinner. Okay, but that five grading actually gives you two 64 dimensional spinners. Mm -hmm. So, which is nice. So, that's because you could think of this other spinner as its dual, and you could think, hey, maybe you can uh, get some kind of super symmetric object out of that. Right. So, it turns out that at that time, I recall Sezgin's paper. Yeah. And I was thinking, hey, like, I've seen this before. Like it's sitting under there. So the grading is not written in Seskin's paper, but I know of the grading. And Seskin stopped in 14 dimensions, and he tried to go to signature 12, 4, right? 16. And did he have the spinners? Did he have any matter in there? In he was write, writing down the, the super symmetry algebra for it. Okay. Okay, so, so the way he extended, I, I'm, it's, I, I didn't really look too much at the spinners there. But uh, I've seen them in, uh, in other papers with yeah, multi-time yeah. theories. So Itzhak Bars at USC actually investigates the spinners. So I've seen it in a different guise, I would yeah. say. Right. So I went back uh, and I, I was thinking, hey, like Garrett has this structure that I've seen before in Sezgin's paper. Yeah. So I need to tell Garrett about Sezgin's paper so he can probably reference it. it. Yeah. Or maybe let's get deeper into it and figure out what's going on. Because maybe the 11, 3 isn't so wild after all, right? So, Sezgin actually took him serious. He took these, <laughs> these multi-time degrees of freedom seriously. And he envisioned that there would be some generalization of the brains in M theory. Ah. Uh. Okay. So, the M2 brain would be something more general in this setting. It would be a three brain that can explore three time directions. So he kind of hinted about it. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was interesting. But if you look back at how you even derive the brains, right? You're actually looking at, uh, you start with the, the three form, okay. right? In 11 dimensional supergravity. So you have a three form and you find the field strength for it, right? And then you you ask, okay, well, what's sourcing this field, this field strength, right? Right. Or this field. So you can ask, okay, what's the Hodge dual of that, right? That'll give you the magnetic um, dual of the field strength. And you can ask, okay, what is sourcing that? And that gives you the M5 brain. I see, yeah. So you can play that game here, and you can ask, okay, if I have a three brain, then what's its dual, right? So it would be some kind of seven brain. 